your various lives, various platforms, those that are watching me on YouTube, on Facebook, on my Instagram live, please can you just do me a favor, tell your friends, share this information. To be a sex wise parent, we are living in a generation that nobody is talking about so many things. Especially when it comes to having to raise our children and uh, tell them the nitty gritty of what it means or what their sexuality is all about. So please help me to share, share with your friends. Thank you for joining. I celebrate everyone that is watching at the moment. Please don't watch alone. It's a lifetime program and it's going to be consistent because I'm living in a generation that we are not sex wise in training and raising our children. We assume that they know so much. I'm going to do an introduction today. This is just an introduction. And if possible, I'll take one or two questions. But I want you to listen with all of your heart. Because listen to me, ignorance is not an excuse. For the fact that you don't believe in the law of gravity, that does not mean that the law of gravity does not exist. Whatever goes up must come down. You need another law to make sure that that thing does not come down we call it the law of aerodynamics so you cannot afford to say oh i don't know i'm ignorant i don't have an understanding of how to raise children and talk to them about their sexuality and you think they are going to be fine they aren't going to be fine life is known by what you know people live they succeed they survive there is no storms that comes your way if you know better you will live better it takes understanding to stand it takes understanding to be outstanding you cannot afford to live your life in such a way that you are just thinking well what will be will be life is not wired or governed or <laughs> arranged that way life is a game you play the games by the rules and the rule of the game of life starts from the day we came to this world i said you know somebody was asking me are you sure children you know what about telling your kids about sex when they are small i said take a day old baby a male child and touch his private part it will have erection that shows that is a man is a total man as a matter of fact the moment you have your child what they would do the midwives the very good hospital that they are very structured and orderly what they would do is so clear they would make sure that they check every part of that child's body they will check the scrotum they will check everything to be sure that you know the child is healthy and is okay before they will say congratulations 85 percent 95 percent at least i've been to labor work several times and i also have grandchildren so i know they always do a checklist of every part of that baby's body if it's functioning properly. If it's not functioning properly, then they would raise an alarm or a concern for them to start seeing a doctor, a professional, you know, because they know that if you don't have a complete child, then there's a problem. Then it has to do with their private part too. If as a baby, a day old child, you know, having been taken care of and um, checked the body, and see that you know when they do a little bit of work on his penis and nothing happens there's no erection it will call for concern so the issue of sexuality is not something we can just assume that oh it will be fine everybody will know it does not work that way and that's why this program please do me a favor i i hate not to know i hate having to struggle with life when God has given us everything that pertains to life. The Bible says he has given us all that pertains to life. This life. Please, can you just let's leave godliness somewhere else. Whatever you're going to use to live this life and be comfortable in this life and be happy in this life, God has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. So if you want life, you want to see life, you want to see good days, you want to enjoy the goodness of God, thank you everybody for joining on Instagram. Please, can you also go to my YouTube channel and like and just, you can watch from there. If you're having any challenge with your network, at your end, please, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, I'm live on those platforms so that we can take all we can, we can understand the dynamics of what life has to give to us in this area to be sex wise parents there are a few things you have to understand hmm. do you know that you have your child your child came to this world because you have 
enjoy the gift of sexuality. There's nobody that jumped from heaven. We all came to this world, you know, like having sex. It's all sex that brought us here. And the moment you know that God has made you to enjoy the gift of sex by allowing you to have a child is the same you have to do to your children for them to enjoy the gift of sex to enjoy the gift of sex and maximize the beauty the fragrance the perfume the aroma that god puts in our sexuality in the lives of our children the moment we miss that opportunity we miss the boat and when we miss it like that we raise children that are chaotic you will agree with me with everybody has been talking about oh, child, domestic violence and you know having married wrongly it all stems from our sexuality ask any lady that married a man that is wrong has been damaged sexually one time or the other ask a man that married wrongly something went wrong with their sexuality so it's beyond, let's just leave it. We can't leave it. We have to be, as parents, listen to me. I'm not even talking about men alone. As parents, we have to be sex-wise, teaching our children, coming to their various levels, reaching out to them for them to know that they cannot afford, you cannot even afford to be an ignoramus in all of this. You cannot even afford not to be able to know that this issue of sexuality is something we have to look into your children are gifts that flows from your sexuality let them understand the beauty of their own flow into their own sexuality now let me say this if the moment you refuse to let your kids know this is an introduction I'm not I'm going to be very very real and practical from the zero to one how do I teach my daughter and my son's sexuality out from zero to five to ten to twenty till about a year that they would even when they are even getting married you discuss their sexuality counseling them you let them know the beauty of virginity but that, let's just take it one after the other now i said something i said if as parents we refuse to push our children to make right choices in their sexuality they will do wrongly they will make wrong choices and when they are getting those information, they are not going to get it from the right person. They are going to get it from their friends, from their neighbors, from their mates, from a pedophile, from a molester, from someone that will be, you know, be sexually assault them. You know, this afternoon, I was reading my ministry phone and a lady sent me a text. And I didn't know when I started being tearful. She said... It's, it's even paining me as I'm talking now. I won't lie to you. She said her mom made her to stay with her, her, her sister's husband. And her sister's husband started sexually molesting her, sleeping with her. There was one I read during her, my recording on She Matters that was not sex. It was just, you know, romance and all. This one was having sex with her consistently. Her sister's husband. And there was no way she could talk because they had financial issue. The father died. So they told her to go and stay with her aunt, with her sister, her blood sister. And, her, and the husband of that sister slept with her for five good years. Five good years. Listen to me. When I talk like this, the reason why I brought this up is because I know there's so much to talk about on this and... The hands, the people that talk about it, they are very, very few. Maybe because we felt the issue of sex. How do we go about it? Oh, the issue of sex, it has to do with shame. Please do me a favor. I'm coming again next week, Thursday, same time. Share, share, share. Let people know. Let them have understanding of what is going on. By the time I'm done today, some of you will be flabbergasted. You'll be dazed. The level of, the level of power, strength. The dynamism of sexual activities that is going on on earth today. Some of us will be alarmed. And you know, ignorance is not an excuse. I've said it before. You don't believe in the law of gravity and you jump from a story building. That doesn't mean that the law of gravity does not exist. The worst that can happen, you are not the one that will come back to tell us that, oh, somebody fell from, this, from the story building because he didn't believe in the law of gravity. It's someone else. It's the news, CNN. We'll pick it. It's a news. 
that oh this person does not believe there is a law of gravity so at the end of the day you know he fell down blah 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 you won't be the one that will talk so don't let's forget the issue of not believing or one not wanting to believe you can't tell me you don't believe in sexuality because you knew that your dad and your mom slept together before they had you somebody said where well, dad and mom slept together yes even jesus his father had to show up <laughs> And God gave him a surrogate father. That tells you that we, we, nobody is living in abstract and nobody is living, you know, from in the blues. We all came into this world because one man and one woman had a sexual intercourse. And that's why I'm passionate about this topic. Now, I said something. I said, if you don't teach your children, if you are not sex-wise, you are not teaching your children, many forces will push your children to make bad choices and bad decisions. Because we are, we are not wired to be blank. There's no space in emptiness. Nature hates vacuum. There must some, no, something must fill it. And we are living in a system. I'm going to give you an analysis today. Some of us will be shocked. Even when I was doing my research, I was blown off. I said, what is this? In a world where there is, I wanted to say in the world where there is God. Or where there are kings. But all of them. Recently, a, a traditional leader died and he had flints of wives. I didn't want, I'm using flints because it's only cars you use flint for, but flints of wives. So it's everywhere. And many factors will teach your children if you don't teach them. False belief. They will believe that sex is wrong. They will have wrong impression about sex. They, they were to lower their value system. You know, recently I began to think and I began to meditate. And I said to myself, mm, as a matter of fact, the sexuality of your child or your children determines their character. When you see a teenager or a child that is wrongly exposed to sex or is being molested or is exposed to sex when the child is wrong, you will notice that the girl would be, or the boy would be defiant to constituted authority. We act funny, we smoke, we drink, we do other vices because something has been damaged somewhere. Sexually, something went wrong in the life of that child. So if you refuse to misplace priority, of course, there are, there's need for spiritual values. Let's call it spade a spade. Let's make it clear. Spiritual values cannot be overflowed. And listen to me, I'm not religious here. This is not religion. No, 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 no. Religion has actually messed a lot of people up to an extent that it's becoming a paradox to religious people. They are confused. Okay, so much churches, so many pastors, so many imams. We have a lot of religious leaders, but nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And that takes us to a place where we have to think, we have to be wise, we have to sit down and ask ourselves some deep questions. And if we cannot ask those questions, then we are going to be in trouble. So, of course, children that are raised by dysfunctional parents, a home where dad slaps mom, a home where kids can count how many girlfriends, a church where the pastor sleeps with the members, we are talking about sex here. A fellowship where the choir leader, the person in charge of, you know, the, the particular group sleeps with each other. What do you explain? So if this topic is not discussed, things will just be happening. And listen to me, sex is happening everywhere. Everywhere. Look at, you know, I was even thinking about the life of <laughs> Joseph and the wife. He wasn't married when he was in Potiphar's house, but the wife of Potiphar wanted him by all means. Now, this is in the married world. We are not talking about singles now. Let's look at it on the surface. Okay, it's not that Potiphar's wife was married to an Enoch. No, let's not look at it from that light. Let's look at married women. Women are supposed to be in a man's house, going after another man passionately, consistently. The Bible says that Potiphar's wife was disturbing joseph every day sex is everywhere don't let us keep don't let us keep snoring and sleeping and acting as if everything is on point everything nothing is on point here 
and I'm passionate about what I'm saying because I've listened to a lot of young ones. I've listened to so many people. I've had them say things and it's like, where are we going? We've been shouting. I'm repeating myself on purpose. We've been shouting domestic violence. We've been talking about, oh, somebody killed someone. How did this start? Sexual life, man. Because a child that is raised from a healthy family, I'm talking about being raised from dysfunctional home, a child that is raised from a healthy family system will not make wrong decisions by marrying a wrong person because in the family there's no secret. When, from, when you are from a dysfunctional home, the first thing they say is don't talk. So secrets are kept. Everybody hide. Unfortunately, you know, I was thinking, why is it that kids, the first game they learn how to play is hide and seek? Why? Maybe there's something somewhere. I will think about it. I just thought of it now. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. They want to keep secret. They want to hide something. A home that is dysfunctional, the first thing is don't talk. So family secrets are kept. Now, don't forget, there could be a facade. I'm a pastor's son. I'm a pastor's daughter. And my parents are rich. We, are, we have good cars. We, we are designers. Forget it. When you are from a dysfunctional home, your sexuality is naturally damaged. Don't talk. Don't trust. Any child that is from a dysfunctional home, have trusted you. And it takes a level of trust to open up your sexuality to your parents, to tell your parents that a guy is after you. I'm still going to say a lot of things in that light. This is just the introduction. And we're going to have a good time. Every Thursday, please publish it, tell your friends. Every Thursday, I'm here on this issue of sex-wise parents. We cannot be foolish. You know, the Bible did not say my people are destroyed because of demons. A lot of people on the mountains, as a matter of fact, everybody you see going for one special prayer or the other, deliverance, miraculous, all these ones, is all stems from our sexuality. It's as spiritual, as serious as that. I tell people, I said 14 invisible people are going into marriage. 14 people you don't see. One of them, is everyone you've had sex with in your life. Sex is not a contract, it's a covenant. When you have sex with a woman, you are tied to that person for life. It is a blood covenant you are going into. And I'm, not, I'm still going to talk about masturbation, pornography, you know, lesbianism, all sorts. I'm still going to address that. But what I'm saying is extremely clear. Sex is not a contract, it's a covenant. Sex is deep. Sex is life. The life is given through sex. Life came to the world through sex. So let's not be, you know, quiet about it. A lot of children have become lack of sensitivity. I said it. Don't talk, don't trust, and don't feel. It's when I started leaving this country to leave Nigeria. I live in Nigeria. When I started traveling abroad, I hear kids say, Dad, Mom, you are hurting my feelings. I've never had that before in Africa. They actually did not born an African child very well to tell her parents or his parents or their parents that you are hurting my feelings. They don't expect you to have feelings. They slap you, whatever. Now, I'm not saying you should not smack. That's not what I'm saying. But when it comes to the deepest part of you, your emotional life, the part of you that brings, that makes you feel wanted or unwanted or you feel hatred and you feel bitterness, you feel unloved, is shut down. So from such a system, don't talk, don't trust and don't feel. So everything is numbed. I will show you. For the fact that people come from a wealthy home or they have influence or affluence does not stop a damaged sexual life. As a matter of fact, it's in the rich house that we have this the more. It is in the house of people that are influential, people that have affluence, people that have been able to succeed or survive or achieve. Those are the most vulnerable. Because 
they overlook some things they believe money and affluence will solve some things insensitivity insensitivity ha ah, let me say this to parents one of the power that god has given to us as parents is the ability to discern and be sensitive it takes a sensitive parent to know when something shifts in the life of your child you will just know you may not be able to put your fingers on it recently one of the girls that I'm helping to recover from sexual struggle told me that it was a teacher that started molesting her sexually. And anytime this teacher comes, she will say, no, I don't want, and come and see beating. She actually showed me the mark of one of the beatings. You are lazy. You don't want to read. What is wrong with you? You are very stupid. You are wasting my money. And the child was trying to run away from a pedophile, from a vampire. To be sex-wise, sensitivity is a key that opens all doors for any man, any woman. Listen to me. Now, let me say this and appeal to men. If you are listening to me now and you are having issues in your marriage, I do post-marital counseling. You know why? Your health is your marriage. Your wealth is your marriage. Your happiness is your marriage. The happiness of your children is your relationship. If you know clearly that you want to end your life and old age in peace and rest, there's no price that is too high to pay and to pay to resolve conflict in your home. I'm, I'm saying it gently because of the weight of what i'm saying there's no price that is too high to pay and to pay to make sure there is sanity in your home because it takes a child that is raised from a very functional home from a home that there's so much peace and happiness there's so much sanity that the child will open up and the child will be comfortable having that kind of conversation with you. I'm still going to tell us on how to do it. But this introduction is extremely important. And before I leave today, <laughs> hey, there was this beautiful girl, a princess. Her name is Tama. Beautiful. Damsel. Coat of many colors. The pride of every woman in Israel is the cl cloth they wear. Because they have kept their virginity beautiful. And one day, lack of sensitivity. I've asked several questions. Where is the mother of Tamar in 1 Samuel 13? Where is her mom? Parents, 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 please. If I have to prostrate, I will do that. Sensitivity opens doors of revelation to you. Now, I'm not talking about being paranoid. I need to balance that. Because some parents are very paranoid. Where are you going? What are you doing? No. When you lay this foundation, I'm talking about being sex-wise as parents. When we lay this solid foundation now, and you understand what to do, you'll be so relaxed. You'll be confident of the foundation, the seed you have sown into the lives of your children about their sexuality, that they cannot be vulnerable, they cannot be gullible, they cannot be treated anyhow. They cannot be taken for granted. They smell pedophiles. They, they smell wrong sexuality. They smell anybody that crosses their path that might want to mess them up. They know. But this girl just told his, his dad, just called him and said, called her and said, your brother is sick. Please go and make some, go and cook for him. Where is it daddy that tells the daughter to go and cook for the brother? Look at the structure. You know David's life now. All his life had issues. He came from a very dysfunctional home. It's paining me. That's why I'm quiet. It's, it's very, very painful. Now, you see, one thing. Let me say this. Let me digress here. It's just one hour. I'm not going to exceed one hour. And I'm not in a hurry. We'll take our time. 
and dissect this information i believe that it's going to be so branded that everyone around you share it please share it on facebook share it share it on instagram tell people to listen just one hour every thursday six to seven just one hour i'm out of this place but if i don't take time to communicate this grace we are, we are already on an explosive bomb in our generation let me say this the moment you refuse to handle the sexuality of your children and the way it's supposed to be handled because your own has been strongly handled you are passing the button to the next to the next to the next generation that was what happened to david as a matter of fact david had only Bathsheba he slept with but by the time he was given the baton to Solomon all the children of David had one sexual struggle or the other can you see the reason why you have to be sex wise as parents do you see the reason why you have to address this issue from your from the core of your being it's not something you should gross over or just push aside no this is life sexuality is life we are all products of sex I can't overflog it. And guess what? Clear, painful. Do you know that when Solomon was going to take the baton from David, he had 300 wives, 700 concubines, 1,000 mother-in-laws. 1,700, 3,000. 2,000 women in one man's life because of the pattern of the bloodline so if i'm telling you to do something now and address this issue of sexuality and being sex wise as parents i am saying that you need to salvage your generation i knew i know i understand that you were raped yes i know you are raised by a single mother a single father yes i know i'm not contending that it's fine i know that you don't have a choice that you have four children for four different men five children for five different women fine i know you are baby mamas fine but please would you just let's do something about our children about the generation coming about the lives that is privilegedly given to us to handle we can't keep quiet. I feel like jumping. We can't just be looking. Thank God you have made your errors. Thank God somebody somewhere touched you wrongly, opened your sexuality up wrongly. Yes, I know. But we have to stop it. One thing that just I said to his dad, do you know that his father wanted to pass down the same pattern to him? And he said, no, dad, no. I'm crossing, no, 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 no. Don't cross your hand. I'm stopping this nonsense. Do I have people that will agree with me, with terms up, with love, with agreement? They are, we are stopping this nonsense. We are not going to continue. We are not going to continue to perpetuate this trouble. We are not going to continue. We are going to address this monster. We are going to deal with issue of sexuality. It's, it's God that originated sex. I'm still going to talk about that. Is God. Sex is not bad. Sex is not ugly. Sex is beautiful. Sex is covenant. Sex is, co is fellowship. Is worship. That's why you see some men, you can't, them, you can't see them worshipping, bowing in worship. No. The only men, go and check it out anywhere. Check churches and fellowships. Where there is deep worship, men that does that, they are men that are sanctified in their sexuality. Because sex, worship is sex. Sex is worship. When you see a man on his face, closing his eyes, lifting up a voice, his voice to the Lord. I'm talking about men now. That man, that man pardon me, that man must be saved and sanctified sexually because sex is worship. Most times it's women that worship. When you, it's women that shed tears in worship. It's, it's women that have altar of worship in their soul. Because sex is worship. So when you are having sex, it's actually worship. You are covenanting. You are, you are, deep is calling to deep before God. 
So no wonder. Do you remember the scripture says that the moment Solomon started having these women, his heart shifted from God. Finish. God cannot be God and sex will be God in your life. But you know what? I don't want to cry over spilled milk. I'm done. I'm actually done crying over spilled milk. I must clean the mess. And that's why I'm focusing on parenting. That's why I'm focusing on children. That's why I'm focusing on how to be smart, wise, as parents when it comes to the sexuality of your children. Let me do this before I leave. I want to get, read a statistics to you. <laughs> hey, we are living in a sex world. I told you, if you don't teach your children, life will teach them. Oh, I didn't finish the story of Amnon and Tama. He now came and started cooking for the, for the brother, Amnon. Don't forget, I'm still going to talk about peer pressure. Do you know it was peer pressure and lack of parenting, lack of being sex wise as parents that pushed Amnon to tell his friend who would have. Who, I, I believe a, comfort, a child should be comfortably tell the parent, Mom, I'm having urge for sex. Dad, I'm, I, I'm, I'm having wet dreams. I just woke up and I saw that, you know, I have a wet dream. And your father should be comfortable to ask you, did you fondle yourself? Did you watch anything? No, 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 no. It just came. Fine. It's not a sin that you have wet dreams. When your cup is full, it falls over or it pours out. Clean up and go and get your life together. But do you know how many youths, how many kids are living in guilt and condemnation because they had wet dreams and they don't have anybody to talk to? Him? They don't have anybody to talk to. Him. Shame. The, the parenting... Being not sex wise has put some kids on a guilt mode of their in their sexuality and condemnation. So they are tired. They can't talk, talk about it. See, I've said it. Let me say it again. This internet, thank God we're using all the platform. We're on YouTube. Please share, share, share. Please help me to share this. Let's let's start dining on the table of wisdom. Let's start taking all we can in this issue of our sexuality because honestly speaking if we don't do it we're in trouble have you ever sat down to think i'm still going to talk about tama there's so much to talk about and this one hour has to be an hour hmm. have you ever asked yourself what will happen I'm, I'm 60 already i'll be 60 next year by the grace of god i have people that are 40 30 20, 10. Have you ever sat down as parents to ask yourself questions? The effect and the impact of social media in the lives of your children. Recently, my grandchildren came. It was She was not even up to three. She came to the house and we wanted to swim. I, you know, I was teaching them. We got a coach to teach them on how to swim. And we were in the room, and the one that is not two, three that time said, Grandma, let's go on YouTube to learn how to swim before our trainer comes. I was sure, three years. When you were three years, were you, do you know anything about YouTube? Do you have a phone? Were you exposed? You know how many of our children are given assignment through the internet? Are you thinking with me? If you are thinking with me, you will not listen to this alone. You will spread it. You will tell the world. You will publish it in God. You will say it at the street of Askelon that already we are, we, are, we, are, we are doomed. Quoting that word. If we don't get everybody on board to start talking about this issue of secrets, Quoted secret. It's not a secret. I was I, I, I was I was born by sex. I had my children through sex. So but the devil wants to destroy a man. He made things. You know, you know what? I said something in one of my episodes. I said you are sick as your secret. You are as sick as your secret. Whatever you cover will decay. I've said it before on one of my you know teachings and all. Please, let's get to a place where 
we will tell ourselves we've had it enough. Enough. We need to belch out. We need to vomit it out. We need to say it out. Do you know that when Tama was baking, the, the brother was looking at him, at her, pardon me, with a lustful eyes. And she did not sense, she didn't sense it. Why? She will not sense it. Because there's no nothing to sense, nothing to perceive. Very sickening, painful. She didn't perceive it. She didn't sense anything. She just felt it's okay. And after baking, the Bible says well, the moment she gave the meal, whatever to the brother, started struggling with her. Because she was not taught. She was not too taught. There's no parent to tell her. You know. No, no, I agree. You know, a lot of people will get so many revelations from that. But what will even be, be what will make David? Yeah? To go and stay with Bathsheba. I will talk about that later. It's another topic on its own. Now, the social media platform. <laughs> Let me read these statistics to you. Now, these statistics was given in 26, 2006. That is 16 years ago. Now, this is US. In Africa, we don't have records. In Nigeria, we don't have statistics. So, when I'm reading it, I'm reading it as far back as 16 years ago. This is the statistics of the effect of pornography, internet, social media, media platform on exposure to our sexual lives. Listen to this. Don't forget, it's 2006, 16 years ago. Every second, 3,000 764 is being spent on pornography every second. I did say every minute, every second. 16,000. <laughs> Let me put it properly. 3,754,000 ,000 is being spent in dollars on pornography spent by both male and female. Every second. 28,258 people view pornography. Ah, these are the kids. Now, don't forget, it's not Africa. You know, Africa, we don't have statistics. We don't check anything. They dump it. They dump. They get the DVD, pornography CD and DVD. They burn it and give it everywhere and sell it with, like, nothing. Now, let me continue. Every second, 372,000 people type adult search into their search engine browse engine every 39 seconds every 39 minutes <laughs> a new pornography video is being created in united states every 39 minutes as far back as 2016 20, 206 16 years ago not now so now you know it's doubled it tripled 16 this is 2022 you know that we're already in trouble. And when it comes to sex, sexual struggle, forget position, forget status. As a matter of fact, the people that are deep into, into these things, there are people that you would have said, no, why? No. Honorable position, no. Great people, no. Those are the ones we see. Don't forget, Africa has no records, no censor, no accountability, nothing in Africa proves it. Proves and confirm any statistics. So these statistics, if a white man in America, if they can bring out the statistics, we should take it as if it's okay in a way. But Africa, forget, we don't have. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think $3,000 a second is a lot of money in one hour. That would be $10,800 per hour. You know the painful money they are making here? They are making that money from pastors, from church goers, from religious people. Let's leave church. These are the people that put their money. The girls and the boys, their parents are not raised being sex wise. Let's look at the money is, that is being spent. 
16 years ago on pornography, raising so much resources and revenue for some states every every minute every second wow i don't know about you but i feel so so overwhelmed i feel let me just take some questions if you have any question to ask me can you raise your hand let me take some questions let me take some questions i need to just because i really it's so much it's so overwhelming that I'm thinking, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? You have a question? If you have a question, let me know. Let me let me see your hand. You want to you want let me just see your wave. You want to ask a question about what we're talking about. You have just maybe something is bothering you. Drop this again. You are sick as your secret. The more secret you keep, the more sickening your life is. Cry it out. Don't cover it. Don't keep it. Don't make it covert. Let it be known. No matter who the person is. No matter who the person is. I know there are a lot of people who way out. There's a way out. There's a way out. Can I say this to all parents? Because I'm waiting for people that have questions. If you have a question, please wave and type it. And let's know if you have a question. Do you know that as parents, you are the first sex instructor to your children, of your children? Put it anyway. You are the first point of call where your kids will know everything about sex. If you don't teach them, when they are doing sex education in school, it's rubbish. Before they got into that biology class, their friends have been making sexual passes. Recently, I got a write-up. I'm going to read it out later. The codes that children give when they are... <laughs> Feeling honey. So when they are typing and you see those those codes, I'll read it out. I wrote it somewhere. You read those codes, you just know that this one, this is what they are saying. I want to have sex. I want to kiss you. Can we go out? Do we have a day today? Uh, da, 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 da. Those lesbians, homosexual, they have their codes. So if you don't allow your kids to be comfortable to listen to you and you don't tell them, you don't teach them, Something else will teach them. That's why I'm still talking about being sex-wise as parents. Now, the moment you don't teach your children about sexuality, what happens is you are making them to have a distorted image about their body, about the way... Okay, why are most parents not intentional about raising balanced children? Hmm. The question is, why are most parents not intentional about raising balanced children. Ah, it's not that they are not intentional. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. You can't give what you don't have. Parents don't know. Now, let, let's ask a question. Who taught them? I remember when I was growing up, I couldn't even tell my mom that I started my menstruation because I was raised by a single parent. That's my passion. I just, I couldn't tell her. So now when I now got pregnant and I bought and did everything, I, I couldn't because there's no one to talk to. That's why you hear me shout this every time. There was nobody to tell. I just told, I said, I sat on a table and, uh, and you know, uh, something shook my bombs and that was it. So it's not that they are not intentional. It's not that they don't want to be intentional. They don't know. You can't give what you don't have. I told somebody, somebody asked me, if you are going to give me a cloth, I will look at the one you are wearing. I've changed my slogan. I will check your wardrobe if you did not borrow that clothes to party. People borrow clothes to party. You can't give what you don't have. That's the problem. So it wasn't that they don't, they, no, no, no. They want to raise, they want to raise children. They want to talk about it. They want to be balanced, but they don't know how to be balanced. They are not balanced themselves. Like I said, if you are from a dysfunctional home, the first thing that is known about is don't talk. Don't trust and don't feel. Your feelings are numb. They don't care. 
It's just, uh, you know how it rolls now. Look at Esther. She was, a, she was, her uh, dad is dead, her mom is dead. So what do you expect? She was at the mercy of uncle. Uncle just told her, if you can't die for the Jews, somebody else will die. That's how they talk. Nobody cares if anything happens. You know what she did? She anchored on God. As a sinner, she anchored on God. She just said, I'll go to the king. If I perish, I perish. Finish. That was what Osina G did. So when she's leading worship, when she's taking us to the throne of grace, she became passionate about all that she knew. So the part of her life that, was, that needed to be nurtured and be intentionally raised in a way that, you know, a child will come out with a lot of confidence and, you know, self-worth and value. That is not there. So all that could happen was she was fixing, she started fixing herself. Don't worry, I will fast. Let everybody fast with me. I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. That's how people that are raised dysfunctionally speak. So you can't blame your parents. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. Another question. 